session fixation and then talk about how the exploits in general will work, what the impact is, and then explain to you the experiments that the two case studies that have been done and how the solution uh, session fixation protection proxy would be able to either fix this or at least buy you some time um, if you want to fix it down at the center where the problem is at the web application but you can put the protection proxy in front of it and last but not least conclude and maybe give some outlook on their future work. So session fixation is known for several years now. Um, at least the latest we found was 2002. And it got compared to other things like cross-site re um, request forgery or cross-site scripting or the famous SQL injections. Got little attention. And sessions are not something that come from HTTP on their own. So HTTP is stateless, so you have to have a session management on top of this. And you do this by providing some, some kind of session ID to track a user's session. So why do you want to do that? Because you want to um, have a user come to your shopping site, see all your great products that they've maybe found through some price comparison or some Google research, and you want them to put them into your shopping cart, and then you, at a later point in time, when they decide, okay, now I want to buy all these 25 nice things, you want them to be logged in or um, get a new user credential and then actually buy those things. And you want to link all these things together. That's why we have, that's, that's why we need sessions. And you do that by either setting this session identifier into a cookie, you can write it into a URL parameter, you can put it in a hidden form field to send it from request to request. Um, the important thing is that you have to carry that, this ID with every request. And this is session management. So that is how you combine different HTTP requests on, and, and link them together into one session. Authorization management is something different. This is when the user actually provides the credentials that um, allow you as an application to change a session from the state of we know this has been linked together and now we want to authorize this session because it's now an authorized user that we can link to this session. So here we have the first root of the problem that is whose responsibility for doing these two things? Is it the framework that you run your um, wrote your application with or is it the developer? And if session management is done by the programming framework or the application server, then is it the application's duty to also do user authentication? Well, session fixation, to sketch the attack for those of you who are not familiar with. Anyway, if there are any questions, because I didn't explain something which is, uh, which should have been clear when some other one explained it, please raise your hand and then I'll try to answer this immediately. So session fixation, to, to quickly sketch it, is somehow related to session hijacking. So you could call it session hijacking reloaded. The attack sketch works as the following. An attacker has to set a session ID. So the attacker chooses a session ID onto the, the victim. And the victim then uses the regular authentication dialog to authenticate using the attacker provided session ID. And then the attacker does not need to steal the session ID, which you usually have to guess or find out in session hijacking, but you know it already because you forced it onto the user. So then it's easy for an attacker to resume an already authenticated session, and this leads 
to the result of a session fixation and, an, and, a, high, and a basically hijacked session. So session fixation actually starts before the user authenticates. It um, comes in, in, in a two-stage attack. The second stage would basically be that the, se the session authentications level is raised for the session ID that, that was provided, that has been fixed. And in the first stage, you basically have to provide the victim with this session. And there you need, in the first stage, another vulnerability to basically set something on the victim's machine um, that carries the session ID. And this could be anything from cross-site scripting to trying to set subdomain cookies or inject headers that then set cookies. But you have to have this tailor-made on the, on the application you're targeting. So in a nutshell, you first, as an, here we have the three parties, the attacker, the victim, and the, the server. Just notice that the server is not under attack. It's the, the client, the user of a service that's running on the server that is attacked here. You get a valid session. You can ask, the attacker can ask the um, server, if I'm logging in and I'm getting a session, he gets a session ID back. Okay, so now he knows that 1337 is a valid session. You now have to do the first stage of attack. You have to provide the user with something he can click on that actually sets and fixes this session on the user side. In this case, it's easy because the um, web application running here allows us to set, set and transport all the session IDs in URL parameters. So you, I sent him just a link, say, okay, if you want to look at my photos or um, whatever the user is likely to click on, um, you do it this way, or you get a 10% discount or whatever. So I get him to log in to his shopping site or the site where he has any credentials. So he will send this fixed session to the server. The server will then answer with um, the form where the user then provides his username and password, and the server then says, okay, now under this session, the victim, the user is logged in, and the attacker can from time to time try to query something called intern JSP, something that is only served from the web server when, when, when the session is logged in and authenticated. So I can do this basically to do two things. I do this every five minutes or every hour or whatever to prevent the session from timing out on the server side and to meet this window of opportunities, this window of attack where the user actually logged onto the site. So for the first stage of attack, you have to fulfill the following preconditions. You have to mislead the victim into clicking on that link. You have to set the cookie at the victim side via some vulnerability and the victim needs to log in to his account um, and you have to meet that time frame. Um, to fix a session, you need some preconditions on the application. So the application needs to be vulnerable to session fixation. We'll see what, what that means in detail later. And you could bound, and that's something you'll find quite often in, in, in the literature. You can bound the session to, to things like an IP or some browser information, but um, if there are several people behind a NAT gateway, then, then IP is just an obstacle, but it's not something that is 100% foolproof. And you have to generate an individual session ID for each and every victim, otherwise the you will only be able to, to overtake a session from the victim that logged in last with these credentials. Might be enough for some cases when you just want to have one valid account, but if you want a multitude of users, you have to um, tailor these session IDs for every victim. But if all these conditions are met, we have a severe attack because we can do a full impersonation of the victim, which um, is mostly, especially for unexperienced users, goes completely unnoticed. 
So, Bastian Braun, Martin Jones, and Michael Schrank did a first case study where they looked at some open source content management systems. And to find out if uh, the default configuration of such a content management system is vulnerable, you basically have to answer three times with a yes the last time, well, at least two times you have to have the right answer. The first question is, does the content management system or the web application provide you with a session ID before any of the sessions are logged in? So before the authentication takes place. If no, it's not vulnerable to session fixation because I can't send someone a session if it's not needed by the web application. If yes, then the question is, um, does the application reuse the same session ID that was used before the authentication took place after the authentication? If yes, as, yeah, and this means not reused, it means reissues. If it reissues, so it gives you a new session ID and it's not vulnerable. So that's the way to mitigate the threat. And if it does not give you a new session ID, so the session ID stays the same after the authentication has taken place, then it's just a matter of are we vulnerable to something where we have to set a cookie, or do we accept session IDs, as in the example in URL parameters, then it's really easy for an attacker. So, these are the looked at content management systems, like Redmine, Yomla, some, some open source shopping sites, most, mostly written in PHP. Um, if you look at this, this means session, the session ID means it, the web application does not generate a session ID. Well, it generates one if you ask her, but it accepts an arbitrary number or an arbitrary value as a session ID. So this doesn't look like something um, which is a good thing to do and it is, is not. And um, most of the um, systems did not accept URL-based parameters, but you have to do this with cookies. So the second case study was how easy is it to set a cookie on the client side because that's probably what the first case study suggested is needed to, to set a URL, uh, to set the session ID. And one way to do this is if you have a header line, in this case it's PHP, um, a header line where you do insert something that is user provided. So I could put another header line in that says set cookie and you can't really read this here and basically say you, you want to set a cookie with, which contains the session ID and if, if I click on that I get a redirect coming with the new location and with a set cookie coming from the original domain of the Volvo web application. So the results of the second case study yields that um, header injection was possible uh, with PHP until version 4.42 or 5.12. It has been fixed. Um, the fix actually uh, looks the following way. You now have to send one header in one set header command. So you can't set two header lines in one set header command, which basically allows you to, to if you go back to here, you can't ins insert anything here because that would all go into, in one header line for this location. You can't make new lines and new header lines. That's how they fixed it. Um, Cherry Pie, Python framework is vulnerable. Ruby on Rails has recently been patched.